In this video, I'll be going over both sides of the airport incident with Fousey too, by providing a defense of Fousey and providing why people believe something sexual did happen in the airport. I'll start by defending him with a quote unquote, it was just a joke defense. FouseyTube was known for being a prankster in the mid-2010s, and he has faked pranks and did publicity stunts in the past for attention. And to pull off this prank, it would be pure cinema. He shared an emotional moment with the alleged sex trafficking victim, talked to her in private on camera, and pointed to the right. He would then tell the bartender he was going to the convenience store. My friend, come here. <laughs> Can you watch our stuff for a second? Sure. Make sure nobody takes anything. I got you, but Thank you, brother. I'm gonna turn it to you, all right? <laughs> I'm gonna go walk with her real quick. I'm gonna buy her stuff from the convenience store. She needs some stuff for, for her flight. Got you. Got Thank you. you, brother. Me and my associates used references to pinpoint the exact location of the airport and got a map layout. At the bottom, you can see there's a convenience store right there. He came back with the punchline of joining the Mile High Club and would feel bad about it and later apologized to the woman over and over and over again. He said they didn't do anything and they just looked at shit when they went away. Hey. And by the way, to everybody I was joking around with before, it was actually a prank, so please respect her and don't disrespect her right now. I, that was fucked up of me to do as like, this is a prank and everything. She did not do anything. She's a woman of two. She loves her children, so please respect that. I fucked up. I got really excited. So I landed in Toronto, and this mom and daughter were super supportive. So I was recording them. And as soon as I come to the bar, you were there. So I was like running the content. And then when we left to go look at shit, I came back and I said, oh, we did shit. So I apologize. The woman does not really confirm anything sexual happened and is very forgiving. Boosie would then explain his side of things over and over again. So I said, do you want to walk and talk? So we walked and talked. You know, I tell her, I go through this, I go through that, I go through this, I do this, I do that, all this shit. What does my dumbass do? As if you always need content and as if just, you know, 10,000 viewers in the airport isn't enough. That's the addiction of clout, you need more. So what do I do? I run back to the camera, I sit down, and I think I even said, well, uh, I said I joined the Mile High Club. I use this woman's pain, her story, her life for my content and that's I have no words for that you if you guys want to cancel me for that feel free so then she shares her story I sent her $300 I start crying why do I start crying going to the massage parlors I've gone to over the years I have no confirmation of this but I always assumed because I thought it was a thing that a lot of these women were flown into this country hey do you want a job work at this massage parlor and you get to stay in this country being like used. Yeah. So I said, I have a lot of experience with sex trafficking. What did the internet hear? Uh. I sex trafficked women strike one strike two. I have my audience on their own unprovoked. Send me money to give to her. I sent her over $3,000. She starts crying. She was going to visit her two kids. She had a hundred dollars in her bank account. Strike two. Cause that's manipulation. You're trying to, uh, uh, manipulate a woman who's in distress and a sex trafficker strike three what does my dumbass do this is a beautiful moment all the comments this is so wholesome i love g7 i love you yusuf what does my dumbass do we walk off camera everyone can see us we hug we're kissing i go you want to go walk and just like you know mess around she goes yeah we walk off camera <laughs> i leave my camera and my luggage with the bar that's how gone i am I'm walking with her. Wait, why'd you leave your shit like that? You Dumbass. weren't drunk. I walk away. I kiss her. We're kissing. We're talking. All this shit. We talk for a while. All of a sudden, I go, I need to run back to my stream. As I'm running back to my stream, all I had to do was run back and say, guys, she has to catch her flight. And that would have been the best moment that happened on my stream in the entire subathon. Guess what my dumbass does? <clears throat> I sit down and I say, guys... I just joined the Mile High Club. Why did I do that? Why, do you... Why did I do that? Kitty, my assistant. Kitty, can I say it? Kitty has joined the Mile High Club. I joke on my stream. <laughs> right before I even took the flight to New York, I literally said, oh my God, the flight attendant's hot. I'm going to join the Mile High Club. It's like no, a running inside so joke. No, it's illegal. So I run back to camera. First thing I say is, guys, I just joined the Mile High Club. 
I don't stop there. I double down. I swear to God, I joined the Mile High Club. Oh my God. I don't stop there. Wallahi. I just joined the Mile, Mile yeah. High Club. Bradley Martin, There's I swear to God on everything that I love. I'm not going to say my mother, religion, or anything because this is a heavy subject. I swear to God on everything I love, I did not fuck this woman. When I swear to God on my fucking dead fucking grandpa and my dead dog that I didn't fuck this woman. Now let's take a look at the other side of the story. If Fousey did it. If you look at the map layout again, there's a men's and women's bathroom right near the convenience store. And in between the quote-unquote joke and him saying he was joking, he said this right in the middle of it. You are praying by Fousey to... I can't keep secrets for the fucking life of me. I can't keep secrets for you in two fucking seconds. You left her in the bathroom? I gave her a choice. I said, you want to come to the men's bathroom or the women's bathroom? She said men's. So it was her option. She came into the men's. So when I left, I said, you leave. Go into the women's immediately and clean your face and clean your mouth. Ha ha. You guys got pranked. Ha 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 ha. He only started to say it was a joke when his chat started to freak out. When he explained the quote-unquote joke to the woman, he mentioned the Mile High Club joke but failed to mention the bathroom story. Fousey told the woman that he joked about them fucking, but fucking doesn't equal sucking. If Fousey did it, he probably got a blowjob in the men's bathroom, and that's why he mentioned her cleaning her face. Also, if he was just walking and talking, why did he come back on camera by himself without her? Why did she come back minutes later? Why is her hair messier than before? Why are there no items from the convenience store? These questions have not been answered, letting people to believe he did do it. He also misrepresents what happened to make himself look better. He states that she only had one drink. She didn't mention how many drinks she had until after they leave the camera, where the supposed bathroom incident happened. I asked her too, have you been drinking? I only had one drink, so you're not super drunk right now? Not at all. You can watch it. She says that. Yeah. No. You're sober? Oh, okay, no. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I just joined the Mile High Club. And I know it doesn't count as the Mile High Club because I was in the airport, but I still joined it. I swear to God. I swear on everything I love. I swear on everything I love. I just joined the Mile High Club in the airport, in the men's bathroom. Because you're drinking and I'm not. So I shouldn't have done that. No, you know, like, this is my second drink. That's your second drink? Yes, my second drink. In my last video, I talked about the allegation that Keemstar called Fousey after the airport situation. That call has been confirmed when Keemstar posted the call log and Fousey confirmed it happened here. So listen, I think me and you had a phone call that you don't remember, but you can prove it by looking at your phone. I see a phone call for one minute, Keem. I'm not going to prove that I said I fucked the Thank woman. Thank you. Okay. When I swear to God, when I swear to God on my fucking dead fucking grandpa and my dead dog that I didn't fuck this woman. But before the space happened with Keemstar, Fousey tried to claim that he immediately texted Keemstar that he did not fuck this woman. Text messages exist between the two parties, but did not happen directly after the airport incident. Those text messages happened six hours after the call, and Fousey misrepresented what Keemstar said in them. Keemstar, right? Text me immediately. Bro, what the fuck? How could you fuck up? My girlfriend's giving me hella shit for it. He wasn't even mad. His girlfriend was mad and he's whipped by his girlfriend. So he goes, my girlfriend's giving me shit for it. I reply to him. First thing I say is, Keem, I did not fuck this woman. He goes to Twitter, bashes me. Goes on drama alert, bashes me. Keemstar would then repeat the allegation on his own video. Fousey tried to twist the time zones into his favor, claiming 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time would make it 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This cannot be the case since EST is three hours ahead, PFC, not behind. Keemstar would have to live here, but he lives in New York, so it's not possible that the text messages happened before the call. Be crystal clear on what occurred at 11.14 a.m. Eastern Standard Time after the airport incident. Keemstar claims he was told by Fousey he he was just playing a character and he did fuck the girl in the airport. That cannot be proven, but I assume Keemstar did not get any bad impressions from Fousey considering the call only lasted one minute. I believe if Fousey broke down in tears or sounded miserable, Keemstar would have stayed on call longer considering they were friendly at the time. If what Keemstar is alleging is true, it's strange because Fousey was crying minutes before that call. Keemstar would then get more context on what happened on the airport and texted Fousey six hours later. Fousey tried to twist the story on Bradley Martin's podcast 
and lied about the time zones to act like the text messages happened before the call. But if you look at the messages, it sounded like they talked prior. Fousey would finally confirm a call did happen on a space with Keem. There has been a clip going around about Fousey talking about his sex addiction with this therapist that definitely looks like Fousey did something sexual at the airport. Oh, you know, a friend of mine tried to say today that I wasn't sober. It was so hurtful. You, you, you've been sober until that uh, thing in the airport. I know that. Right? Love you, Susie. Right, yeah, I love you. Bye. I'll see you Monday. Bye. Bye. Uzi would try to explain later why his therapist said that after Keemstar reposted the clip. I went and got a handoff, a hand job at a massage parlor because I'm a fucking addict. Okay? That's why. You don't need to know everything about my fucking life. I'm blocking his ass. I'm blocking his ass right here. Keemstar. Block. Nobody needs to know about my fucking life, man. I give everything and they still want more. That doesn't really make sense because the therapist said at the airport, but she could have misspoke. And to be charitable, he did re reference he recently went to the massage parlor on Bradley Martin's podcast here. I used to be addicted to massage parlors. Still am. Yeah. Still today? Yeah. When was the last time you went? Don't want to say. Like the last time I went, I'm not going to say when. Last time I went, I had no intentions of going. I said, why the fuck? I'm sober now. All of a sudden... Something happened in my life. I've been stressed recently. What? What happened? Everything. Everything. All this stuff? Yeah. Okay. And then all of a sudden, pops up in my head. I wonder what girl is working right now. Maybe I should just go check. See. On autopilot, you literally lose control of your senses. I could literally sit here right now and say, Brad, do not drink this or do not lift that weight. No matter how much I said it, you're still going to lift that weight. I get in my car. I go. I finish. Real addiction. How was it? Incredible. <laughs> I'm not going to lie about my... In conclusion, I wasn't there, so I cannot confirm or deny if anything sexual happened at the airport. I don't think Fousey is trustworthy, but I'm not going to outright say he did it. However, I still think he's a scumbag either way. I find it weird if Fousey is telling the truth, he immediately went back on his addiction. He's still currently live streaming his life, and it's no way healthy. In the middle of making this video, he's been kicked out of casinos, and I think his assistant left him. I just hope he gets help, man.